For the last several months, ED Films has been working closely with Takut Productions to realize their vision of the Nanner look. I'm not going to go into the details of the actual story, but what we will do is take a look at some of the animatic that we've received. And what you'll see when you're looking at the animatic is that there's a lot of dynamic camera positions, characters from many, many different angles. They move in a very three-dimensional way. While the storyboards work really well, they demand a much more elaborate kind of animation, either 3D animation or traditional animation, where you really have the liberty to draw the character moving in a very three-dimensional way. One of the difficulties we face with working in that style of animation is that we don't have the capacity to create that many assets or that many drawings to finish the entire film. So we need to be a little more creative with how we apply ourselves to realize the illustrated drawings of Ava Weiderman. And we really want to hang on to that painterly style as much as possible. Animating these characters in her style frame by frame is simply not feasible. and It would just take far too long. So what we've been doing is trying to flatten out the animatic as much as possible, redrawing some of the frames, and then taking Ava's layered paintings and turning them into little 3D puppets in Maya that are not entirely 3D, but also aren't entirely two-dimensional. This technique gives us a little more depth with the characters, so we have the ability to rotate along all of the axes and get a bit more convincing animation. And it also maintains our really fast pipeline where we're literally dealing with one drawing per character or just a couple of drawings per character instead of the full modeling and texturing process we'd have to go through if the characters were actually fully 3D. One of the other major benefits of this method for this project is that we don't have to do any fur simulation or lighting or anything else. Now that you know how we came to this technique, I'd like to show you how it's pulled off in as few steps as possible. This isn't going to be a step-by-step. -step. We're just going to try to scrub through it as quick as we can just to give you a sense of what's actually going on. And we'll start out by doing a really basic fish and just modeling and texturing it. And maybe in some other videos, I'll show you all about the rigging and everything else. Okay, so what uh, Ava gives me is a, a layered painting. So it has these fins here, and I'm just turning each layer off. I'm not sure what that was. I might have added that. So I get an eye, and then I have the whole body, or she is separated in a whole bunch of different pieces, like the tail and the fins, which if I were doing it in After Effects would be better to be separated this way. And initially, the mouth of the character was actually closed, um, but I went and opened it up a little bit. So I did some work on actually getting the mouth open. It's usually better if you have your mouths open because I can close this easily. I can't, I can't open a closed mouth very easily. So I had to go in and repaint the mouth and add a little bit of openness to it so it could be closed. And anyway, she's, she has separated this body out quite a bit for me. But it's actually not quite necessary for this character because the fish is all just one piece aside from those other fins. So what I did is I'll just I'll just close this out and show you what I what I continued to do. Let's just turn all this off. We'll get this back to a gray. First of all, I expanded the composition to a perfect square because in in Maya, you're you're best if you use your texture maps as perfect squares. It doesn't matter how big, it just has to be a perfect square. And sometimes it doesn't use the space very well. As you can see, I don't really have a lot to do with this fish on this perfect square, but I have the opportunity to add other things if I want. Essentially what I did is I pulled these fins off the body. They were sitting up here. They were sitting in their various places, and I just pulled them off and moved them off center here. I also, let's see if we can get rid of this eye. I created a new eye, which is actually bigger than the socket, because this I'm going to project onto a sphere I have a couple of things. I have a thing called shinies, and then I have the actual eye here. And the shinies are going to be a separate layer that I put on top that make create the reflective property of the eye. Now, I can simulate this in uh, Maya, but the way I'm going to be rendering things is we're not actually going to get shininess and reflectivity. I'm actually taking all of that out because I want it to look as painted as possible. I don't really want a 3D look to it. So I'm going to duplicate the eye layer and create a shiny layer that's going to sit on top. I'm not doing anything with the pupil, so I didn't like. Usually, I'd create a separate layer for the pupil, um, but in using Maya, you can actually adjust the pupil with geometry. And then I actually have the whole rest of the body, the the body of the fish here, 
which are all those different pieces we just took a look at and it's not really necessary to go into much depth on that and then I created a little inside of the mouth which I may or may not use so that's that's just goes back behind this mouthpiece here and I'll wrap it around with a piece of geometry it's not a tongue it actually follows the bottom jaw for Maya you can use PSD files to create your transparencies and stuff like that but I find a method that's been working better for me is to actually create a color tiff and a an alpha tiff file so there's this thing called I don't know if, if you guys have ever dealt with it before but I'll show you the difference results that you actually get but I usually try to grab a color for the background that is an average color of the actual character here and the reason I do this is there's this thing called alpha matting and it's like a color mat that goes around the edges if you don't do it and let's say if this background was gray or pure white for instance when the character showed up on a dark background you would see the finest little white edge around the alpha channel that would show up where the transition between fully transparent and half transparent is not perfect so you're actually getting some bleed of the background color through there and it's really important to consider this and I'll show you it later in the actual in actual Maya but one of the ways I deal with this is I create sort of a neutral background color that that works with the average color of the character and then I go in and paint with a soft brush brush underneath so let's just say I'll go up here and I grab like a really soft brush and I make it nice and large and then I literally just sample colors that are along the edge let's go here and I just create a new layer and then I sample the colors that are along along the edge here I just sample them until it looks good because what's going to happen is we're going to get a transition between this edge color and the background color very 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 subtly that will happen on the actual alpha channel and I'll, I'll show you like I said I'll show you an example of it a little bit later so if I do this what it does is that transition isn't noticeable so let's just do that so you don't you know you can be as detailed as you want I don't worry about it too too much like it's not we're not doing anything that's rocket science here but I do like to give it pay it a little bit of attention so that especially if this fish is going to swim against a dark background I don't necessarily want a sharp edge around it so this is something I do to create that and as you can see on the shiny part um, this shiny where the shinies are I've painted a whole bunch of white behind there and the reason I've done this is if I leave this green in those faded edges where the white is transitioning to completely transparent there's going to be a slight green tint to them so if I paint this white underneath then that won't be there so what I usually do for the alpha channel is I create a black solid okay so just a, it's just like creating a solid color and it's a black okay and I create that and then what I do is I, I group all my layers together and then I duplicate the group and I flatten it out turn off this layer and then I just take the color channel just press control U and I turn that up to 100% to white and this creates my alpha channel based on the painting and I can also see in this alpha channel where there may be things that need to be touched up as you can see there's like a couple of spots here that are showing transparencies where they probably shouldn't uh, let's actually get this a little smaller and just in here too okay so then what I can do with this oh and there's some edges here too so I'll sample the black and so I can just paint off the alpha channel so this alpha channel will be the alpha channel for the actual fish it doesn't include any of these colors or anything so I can create this alpha channel really easily so I'll, so then my next step is to save it out to TIFF files and they're not layered TIFF files and I save them in a, my Maya folder which I have work going on here I'm not going into great de detail on how to set up projects and stuff like that I'm assuming you know Maya a little bit so I save it into the source images and as you can see I have Arctic Cod Alpha okay so then I have this alpha layer that I use once that's saved out I go and I create a reference layer now the reference layer is so that I can work with the modeling I find it really hard to work with these kind of weird colors going on when I'm trying to do modeling so then I save one of these and we'll just save that again as another as another TIFF file and I've already got one saved so this one I call Arctic Arctic Cod color reference like so this is my reference and I sometimes I'll put this as a gray background and not a green one but the fish shows up well enough on this green one that I don't have to worry as you can see some of my other color reference ones there's a gray background on them okay so then this will be the color reference I'm just re replacing that and then the last one is the actual color that I'm going to actually use for the finished fish so actually I'm just going to also fix this there's this green down here I want to grab it's a little better okay just, it was just inside them out there okay so that, there's that guy and now what I'll do is I'm gonna save this one 
tiff uh, not layered and this is going to be actually the color and I call this one color bleed but you could just call this color strictly color but I'm calling this color essentially with the bleed because this is the first time I've done the bleed I've never done the bleed before because I didn't think I needed it but some of the renders I've done have shown me that I really do need to consider this a little bit more especially with these fins that are semi-transparent if you take a look at this alpha channel there's semi-transparent fins all over the place so I'm gonna have to be able to deal with the color of those okay and that's pretty much it that's the that's how I set up the file and I'm just doing the fish because it's relatively simple alright so let's move into Maya I'm here in Maya so the first thing I want to do is bring in my textures I'm not going to go through everything exactly of how to do it all because honestly I'm not even that good at using Maya so I'm just I'm just gonna do my process and there's probably a billion better ways to do this okay so I'm just creating I'm creating one of the color layers that we're gonna be working with and I'll start with just the main one I'm not gonna worry about the alpha channel or anything right now I'm just doing the basic color layer and this I'm going to call fish color ref okay so that's the reference for the color of the reference okay so it should I should be able to find the source image pretty easy they were we're in source images and I just want to use the color reference I'm not going to use the color bleed perfect okay so the next thing I'm going to do is this is where things are maybe a little strange is I'm going to create just a just a plane here on the surface now you really could use any program for this you don't have to use Maya and I'll just assign this material to it. So let's go into material where we can see the actual material mode here and let's get rid of this grid. Okay, so now you can see the fish layer. All right, pretty easy. And the next thing I'll do is I'm going to create a, a layer here with the object in it. So now the object's on there and I'm just going to call this attributes. Okay, we'll just rename it. I don't know why the it should be popping up a little icon there or a little menu but it's not it could be because it's off my screen somewhere in, a, in another screen setup col reference okay so let's go back into the col reference so I'm gonna lock this so it's now just a strictly a render layer I can't do anything with it and then this is when I start just building geometry I usually start completely two-dimensionally which may, may be a weird way to work I don't know so far it's worked for me so um, I'm gonna go into orthographic and then just into top view and I actually use a fairly primitive method of modeling to do this it's a kind of an old-school method that I learned uh, when I was first starting out and what it involves is creating a single polygon square at some point on your character and usually a really important point like I just put it one around the eyes because usually with characters because they're blinking I'll do a lot of detail around the eye so I'll start modeling right from the eye but for this character fish don't blink so this character I probably would start around the mouth somewhere and then everything's going to branch out from there and it's I'm not sure if it's the best way to work the nice thing about Maya which is one reason why I'm using it for this project is unlike After Effects I can really define where my high resolution geometry goes and where a crease needs to be so if a limb or an arm or leg is bending I can really put a lot of detail where that bends supposed to be where the puppet tool doesn't currently allow you to define where it places its polygons so essentially what I do is I've now got this little this little piece of geometry here and I make it I make it work just inside I know that the mouth is going to need to bend at the corner I'm probably gonna want this to be here and there's a lot of different ways you could do this there's probably a million better ways like I I'm not really great at Maya by any means I'm not really great at 3d it's something I've always you know I never really picked up super well I've always wanted to but it was it's just it's a whole it's a whole huge investment and I'm just not that good at it uh, I, and it even took me years to figure out how to model like this properly I read all these books on modeling characters and they always modeled like this and I never understood and they do it in 3d like I'm just doing it in 2d and then pulling it off like these guys would model plane by plane in 3d and slowly sculpt things out and since the emergence of ZBrush and other programs like that it's really changed the way people model and I don't find with these type of characters that ZBrush is really much of a necessity. It, it's it's a little bit overkill. 
so yeah, so this way actually works really, really well for me because I can really define where I want my detail and where I don't. And actually, I actually feel like it's one of the faster ways. Another way you could do it is just create a square and just start dividing it up in big chunks. It's, a t it's another way to model. Instead of modeling from a face and going backwards, you could literally just, let's just do it really quick. You could create a square here like that, grab the edge and extrude it off and just start shaping it to the fish and just keep doing that. Oops. Just one piece at a time. Okay. I'll just leave this in here for now. Probably model. All right. So anyways, essentially see what I'm saying. Like you can do a broad model or you can do a more focused model. Now the thing that's happening right now is that my geometry keeps disappearing. It's hard to see. So what I do with the shading is I put wireframe on shaded and that allows me to see my geometry. So I'm just going to continue working with the face pieces and the edges. I'm just going to extrude these out. And I'll probably fast forward through this for you so you're not going to have to watch everything I'm doing because it can be a fairly long process. All right, so as you can see here, I am working in fast forward mode here. I actually wish I could work this fast. I'd be the most employable person in modeling. I'm sure there's some guys that could actually do this. Essentially what I'm doing is just creating the outline of the face with the polygons. I'm trying to focus on creating more polygons where there will be more movement and distortion in the character's face. With fish, there's not a lot of distortion in the face that I'm aware of. I haven't done a whole lot of research on on how they move and what goes on with the fish but I do know there's very little facial distortion happening mostly I'm focusing on putting stuff around the jaw and the upper lip and a little bit around the eyes and then there's going to be stuff for the gills and everything but in the actual animation I don't think we're going to be spending a lot of time closely looking at a fish so there won't be the nuanced detail of movement that you might expect if you were to get a closer look. The fish will mostly be moving around in the backgrounds and then there'll be the brief exchange with the fish and the seal, but that again will not be with close proximity and we won't be closely analyzing the, the fish's face. So with that in mind, I'm not going into great lengths of putting tons of detailing into this character and I'm just trying to move fairly quickly and stay true to the form of the fish. Now this technique of modeling has worked for me for the other characters. It's a little bit time consuming. It also takes, a, it's a little bit like solving a puzzle because you can't, I try not to have any triangles emerge and I also try to make sure I have no um, five-sided squares. So I try to keep everything squares as much as I can and just allow the geometry to move with the face. I think they're called edge loops. and. So with edge loops, the goal is to create the geometry of the face so that it follows the structural flow of the character. So I never really understood these things forever. They never really made much sense until I started animating in 3D. And I started to realize that if I was creating facial animation and the lips were pulling into a smile, if my edge loops weren't following the flow of the face, the deformations were a little bit weird and they would crinkle in strange spots. So I believe the idea is to have your polygons have a flow that is actually lending itself to the muscle structure of the face so you get movements and deformations that are effective and accurate to how the actual face is built. I know that's not necessarily the best explanation, but I can guarantee you it'll make more sense once you start animating with a character and seeing how the different ways of setting up a face will change how it deforms when you're actually animating it. So right here you can see I've got some weird gray texture that showed up there for a second, and that's because I hadn't put a transparent texture on this character yet. And I forgot to mention that I usually create a Lambert with zero opacity and I apply that to all the meshes while I'm doing this process so that you don't have any weird gray flickering or anything like that when you're modeling. The only reason we couldn't see it before is because we're in a top view and both the texture plane and the plane I was modeling on were exactly the same space. So they sort of disappeared. 
So right here, I'm doing what I often end up having to do is I'm going in and correcting the edge loops a little bit. So how I was structuring the face. To me, it's usually like solving a, a puzzle. And as I go, I find little areas that aren't actually working or I'll be put into a corner where I have a five-sided polygon or a triangle. And I try to find ways to get rid of those because where there's a triangle, sometimes the geometry can pinch. So if the, the eye of the fish, or let's say if it had a cheek and it was a human character, when it squinted at that triangle, there'd be a sharp edge. So you're trying to avoid stuff like that as much as possible. Um, sometimes you just can't get around it. Sometimes there's a point where you just have to terminate. And that's usually done in the corners of eyes or other places. But there are a lot of sites and tutorials online that explain this process more accurately than I could. And definitely would encourage you to look into it if you're curious. It's not as important with these types of characters because there's the animation is so much more limited than it would be in a fully 3D character. All right, so at the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of that geometry that I put in for the body. And I want to just keep working from the faces that we've already created. And the reason for this is I it will flow better with the character. I don't have to try to merge them up. And I don't have a ton of faces that I'm working with. I was able to get the get the amount of detail down as we got closer to the gills. So it worked out really well. So here I'm just extruding off all the edges and fitting them to the outline of the fish's body. And then I'm just going in and refining them a little bit. And here I'm trying to terminate some of the polygons into triangles. This effectively gets rid of that row of polygon faces. So you can see, you know, over here I might have 12, which I didn't count, but I might have 12. And then down at the end of the tail, I'll be hopefully down to about eight. So now I'm just extruding off the, the body and creating the fins. I did space what I think they're called isoparms. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I did space them out along the body so that they would line up with the fins properly. It's really important to understand the modeling process with the software package you're working with. It will completely change your workflow when you do understand what you're doing, and it can be very frustrating when you don't. I make some of this look a lot easier, but if you don't understand the package, it's very difficult and it can be extremely discouraging. So I encourage you, if you are going to try this 3D stuff out, that you do get a basic understanding of how to model, how to merge vertices, how to merge edges, how to extrude off faces, and how to add divisions to polygon faces. I find polygon modeling actually a really great way to work because polygons are so versatile. You can easily merge them, split them, glue them together, like bend them, warp them, add new edges. They're a lot easier to work with than I find NURBS, which are a lot more complicated. And even subdivision surfaces, which are also really great, aren't always the best way to work, especially when the geometry has to be matched so specifically to a previously illustrated piece of art. It is also a little bit overkill, for especially for these characters, because they're really just flat planes that are slightly warped and distorted to give the sense of depth. So here I'm just adding to the eyes, and now I'm starting to build in the fins. And there I'm just using a really simple flat polygon face and just adding divisions to it and making it fit more to the shape of the fin. I'm trying to keep in mind as I'm doing these, this is the inside of the mouth, how they're going to be bent and how they'll be animated. If like for a fin, for instance, if you are going to have a lot of subtle movement in the fin, you're going to need a lot more divisions. I see these fins as moving more generally because we're never getting that close to them. They don't have the nuanced finger wiggling movements if you look really close at a fish. So it's definitely not something I'm worried about in this particular version. Okay, and so here I've just created a basic polygon sphere. I've brought the actual division count down. I think it's at 12 and 12. Not 100% sure, you can probably see it there. I can't see it right now. And essentially with this, I want to make it not a perfect sphere because a fish's eye is typically flatter on one side. It's not a perfectly round. So I'm just selecting the vertices and flattening that eye out a little bit and bringing it down. So it's going to sit sort of like a rounded half cylinder in the socket. And as you can see, it, it will, I'm just making it the, roughly the size of the circle. and eventually will project the texture onto the face of that sphere. The next video is where Maya really takes the advantage over After Effects, where we can actually start rounding out the character's form. This will give us a lot more freedom when it comes time to animating this character in 3D space.
Before we end this video, I just want to take a quick moment to thank Takut Productions for giving ED Films the opportunity to present their creative IP in our tutorials during the production of this short film.